Hey guys, Jimmy Graham at Parker Mansour with Able Shepherd. Um, we list recommended gear quite often. Now, notice I said recommended, not required. People are always like, I don't have a this or I don't have a that, can I still start? The main thing that is absolutely required is safety. So it's gotta be safe, it's gotta be reliable, it's gotta be uh, things of those natures, but we, you know, as long as you've, if you've got a firearm and you are gonna join the program, we see this quite a bit, just call us, ask us, if you, you know, if you show up and we see something unsafe, obviously we're gonna address it. We hate seeing people waste money. And, you know, we've all, we all talk about having that box of misfit holsters that, that can go to hundreds, even thousands of dollars in gear that didn't work. So we try to cut the corners for that. I'll piggyback on that and say the same thing about pistols or rifles, primaries or secondaries, is if you're joining or, or starting a program, that sort of thing, or starting our program, don't think you have to go buy a pistol or a rifle right now to be able to start the program. If you have questions about what you're looking to do or what we recommend for you specifically as well, then, then you know, talk to us before that. Please don't actually go buy. <laughs> because I just say it breaks our heart to see it, send somebody away with a brand new sticker still on it. You're, that's a used gun now, so you're not going to get your money back. So use one of mine. If you want to come in, use, use one of our guns. If it's your first time or, you know, we supply the gear for the POP, but then even starting, we can take care of you and point you in the right direction. So we, we, uh, we love doing that. How do we end up here? There's, there's many platforms out there, especially when you're talking about the AR platform because they're so modular. Um, when somebody says, you know, what should I put on my AR? The first thing that we're going to ask is, what are you asking it to do? This has been clear. Just don't check me, brother. Good. What we found is the majority of people taking a class like Protecting Our People for a program like Able Shepherd, called Able Shepherd, um, it's protective in nature. Meaning that if you're looking to pr protect people, well, where? So if you're looking to trek across Kansas or something in the long range, it would probably be a different firearm with a different optic. Talking about owning that immediate area, we'll call that 200 yards. Yes, out to three, easy, but we, we grade it out to 200 yards, meaning I need to put fast, reliable, accurate rounds out to 200 yards and in, but I also need something compact for getting out of vehicles. There's a different designation pistol like this versus pistol like this. So there's pistol and rifle. So there's some, some terms that we're gonna throw around if, it, if you've never heard them before. There's just classifications based on what the, the links and of barrels, the type of brace or stock that it's gonna have on it is gonna change the, the definition of that. So when we say pistol, this is a rifle, but it's just classified as a pistol according to the ATF. For right now, this is, a, this is a considered an arm brace. We have a single point sling. This one kind of gets people to like in the day of collapsible, you know, um, backup sites. So if you see BUIS, that, that backup iron sites is what that means. It doesn't mean they're made of iron. These are actually polymer and this one is metal. But why do you have a fixed rear on here? So a lot of times until you pick up a kid or do medical, you know, some kind of medical care or climb up a ladder or climb a fence or do whatever, you leave your, 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 uh, your AR bouncing off of your chest. We need this thing secured. So with this single point sling, this is our design, it's just the simplest, like a minimalist sling. I wanna be able to secure this to my hip when I'm not using it. We went with an MRO, Parker, do you wanna talk about the Trigicon MRO? So it's the same family as the ACOG, which has been used uh, quite a bit in the military and very, very tough. The features of the MRO in the original version up to the new version is it's a single dot in either red or green and it's got different brightness settings. So it's got brightness that you would use just for the naked eye, I think three through six. We just want to have that just bright enough to be able to see it based on the ambient light that we have. We don't want it too bright where it starts to flare out and we start to lose the capability of being precise with those shots. And then there's uh, two other settings that are that are underneath that three, which is a different frequency that's gonna be used for night vision. Again, close distances can be fast and repeatable. So red dots, it, it's more than enough for those distances. We test those at a distance. The MRO, I mean, the Trigicon family, I've, I've carried um, ACOGs all over the world. They're super tough. A lot of people rate these optics, like some of the, the, the less expensive new stuff on the new kid on the block, from shooting indoors all the time on a range and then putting it in a bag and carrying it back in. That's gotta have some kind of weather resistance and be able to bang it around or I'm not gonna trust it. So I've got time with the ACOG family. When they came out with the reflex sight, I had to give it a shot. They're a little more expensive, but in my opinion, they're worth it. We've got a, we've got a lower one third um, mount. That's, that's not the point of aim. So it's, it's a little bit higher so you clear this. You don't look through this at all unless you need it. it. Means you look at the red dot, and if that red dot for whatever reason isn't on, I reach up to this Magpul front pop up, and now I actually go to iron sights. Looking through the tube, forgetting all about any kind of dot or anything, and now at least I've got an option to uh, to be sighted to, to to get some kind of um, point of aim. We recommend this ladder sight again by Magpul. All that does is protect your thumb. 
I don't think that you need to go to a Mark 18 with all that surface area and additional weight. You can mount anything on here as well. You just need a little adapters, but by not going with the Mark 18, it goes with a little bit skinnier, a little bit lighter, and this is just to protect your thumb. On entries, we highly recommend that that thumb is over the top. If you're cupping this on entries and you hit some kind of conflict, like a person or a door or whatever, that, that uh, muzzle can go right into your face and bust your face open. So that's that thumb over the top to protect you. We, always, we also use this for striking with that muzzle when that's applicable. And then we've got a, a, a light mounted on there for target ID. You wanna go over that one, Parker? So it's a TLR7 from Streamlight. It's the original version and it's got side button for on and off and you can actually push those forward or pull them back as well as pushing them straight through. It's a 500 lumen light, small enough platform because it's a secondary or pistol light that we can actually put it on the rifle. 500 lumens will eliminate whatever we need to out to the distances that we would be shooting in the dark with this platform. Otherwise it would be you know something on night vision or something that would be more illuminated dusk during the day, that sort of thing. It's an amazing capability of a light system that is meant for a pistol that we can use on the rifle. Then I wanna back up and talk about our sling. So when we talk about this single point sling, we need a sling to do many things. Like we want it to tuck out of the way. Um, if you have a traditional two point sling and it's not stowed, again, you get out of that vehicle, you need this gun to work right now. And if it snags on the shifter, on the seat adjuster, on your blinker knob, on anything, you're stuck to the vehicle and you can't fire your, uh, you can't shoot this firearm. So I want to tuck it out of the way. I want to use one of, we use one of our take care of one another Abel Shepard uh, wristbands. I've always got this on. So if somebody snaps, you know, cause after a while they break or something, I'll just pull it off and fix it. But that's why we have that stowed there. So the, 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 uh, the objective is to pull that out of the vehicle, have that immediately at the ready and then use it. But the first possible, uh, you know, time you can put your thumb in and pull it forward. That's going to deploy the sling it's gonna go over your opposite side as soon as you can, and now this thing's affixed to you. So you're ready to strike and shoot and do all that, and when you transition, it's gonna be attached to your to your, your body. But once I throw that thing, I want that thing to be connected to me. I don't want it laying here. If I need to uh, fight or medical aid or anything like that, I don't want this hanging out in front of me. Why not? <laughs> no, I've literally seen <laughs> people go to fight. Hit, transition, we used to just turn them and just set them like this, then go into a ground fight, and I've seen the muzzle, 16 inch rifles, go and crack people right in the throat and dang near knock them out. So we wanna make sure this thing should end up behind me. When I transition, whether I'm going for my secondary, where I'm going to fight, whether I'm going to do medical aid, any of that stuff, we'll talk about a, a weapon sketch. We have a triangle shaped um, QD that's gonna restrict that, it's gonna bring it down to a finer point so it doesn't have that wide strap. That wide strap QD connector can actually keep your thumb from getting to the safety. So if you want to get that thing from safe to fire and your slings in the wrong position, you might not be able to. So now you've got your gear restricting your capability and we don't, we don't have that. So we made it, we had these slings made, we've been using them for years and testing them easy on and off because it's got a fast tech. That fast tech's towards the floor. I can go right shoulder, I can punch out and go left shoulder, I can go underneath vehicles, I can do all that and I can snap off the transition. Then I'm firing here and then I go to transition when I, my right hand's gonna go for a pistol, my left hand simultaneously is gonna throw this away. And I want this to slide on my collar. I don't want gear here. I don't want adjusters, I don't want buckles, I don't want threads, I don't want anything. I want it to slide and bounce off uh, behind me and be in a position where I can uh, safely maneuver with whatever I need to do. Let's, let's talk about secondary further. So the secondary platform that we recommend is gonna be a Glock platform. If you would check that real quick. Yes, please. Clear. So it's gonna be either a Glock 19 or 17, or if you're looking for more of the concealability, that staggered stack or single stack, the Glock 48 or 43X. Same, the 48 is actually the exact same dimensions, it's, it's just narrower. So it's gonna be smaller this way, but everything else, the barrel length, the grip length, everything else is gonna be the same. That way on that somewhat some subcompact design, you still have a full grip, where the mag isn't part of your grip. One of the biggest things, you get with those subcompacts is the mag will be your bottom two fingers so that when you try to mag change or when you uh, have a problem now you're barely holding on to the firearm because you've only got one finger and your thumb holding on to it when it's a full grip you can actually keep an entire grip around it and then the mag will be independent of that for setup beyond just the standard glock platform sights so transitioning over to night sights trijicon xd hrs or just the xds is going to have the illuminated tritium night sights in the back and the front and then a high-vis fluorescent front sight to be able to pick that up with both your eyes open. 
Some other things that we've done to the Glock is undercuts. So Glock made a very tiny little undercut when the when they first manufacture them. I don't know whose fingers that small, but you just undercut them just a little bit, gets you a little bit higher on that purchase, so you can get as high as you can in that back strap. And then slight spring modification, so a polish job, and then changing out just a couple of springs, leaving the striker spring alone, will just smooth out that trigger pull just a little bit more as it's been simulating having 50,000 rounds through it. So everything's just smoother, it's more refined, it's not as gritty as a standard stock trigger would be. Other than that, that's pretty much it. You can just run this platform and it runs. I've been running this platform for five years and really have never had an issue with it. Slight things that, that maybe the user have, has caused, but as far as the platform running, it just runs. The other version that we can look at doing is uh, what Jimmy likes is the 19 long slide. <laughs> So taking a Glock 17 and cutting the grip down to be the same length as a 19. So now you have the sight radius of a 17, but the grip radius of a 19. When you have this on your body, all the long things are pointing towards legs. All the things that we don't want so long that are going in the opposite direction of our body are now more of that 19 concealability. Another option for it. Same sights, same polish job. Uh, extended controls, so extended slide release, extended mag release to be able to manipulate it just a little bit more. Usually these on pretty much every manufacturer that is a stock manufacturer makes them really small and thin because of competition shooting. Different grips than what we talk about as far as defensive grips. And they're thin so that they go in the holsters so you don't um, mash them or touch them when you're using different grips that are meant more for competition shooting. In a defensive technique, we wanna be able to get that magazine out right now. We wanna use our thumb to drop the slide so that it, we can get a better grip and get back to defending either ourselves or our packages or our buddies and those extended controls are going to help with that. Again, when we talk about back to the recommendation, it's a recommendation meaning that if you have something and it's safe, go ahead and try it. Uh, but if you're going to take the time, and if you're going to invest the time and money into yourself, what we see is people get as good as they can get with that firearm. Then we change out the firearm and they can keep going, but it's after this, this period of instruction, now it's gonna take them more time and money to get up to where they should have been already. So we see that quite a bit. And we're looking at other kind of sight options and things like that, uh, red dots, MROs, holosuns, those types of capabilities that just drastically change from a standard set of iron sights, but is it something that you would, would, would carry every single day? Would you trust your life with it? Would you actually be able to use that in defensive posture right now like you would be able to use iron sights and we're in the process of testing some of that stuff. All right guys, hope you got something out of this video. Again, there's a lot of options out there for this particular um, objective of taking care of your loved ones in that closer quarters to, we call that 200 in to be fast and repeatable. Um, this is what we're running with. If you got any questions, hit us up, ableshepherd.com. Until we see you guys again, God bless you. Take care of one another.